Gerald Croft was different from the Burleys. He was not quite as arrogant as Arthur, nor as fragile as Sheila. He was polished, confident, and accustomed to navigating social situations with ease. But beneath that smooth exterior, I could sense something else, a tension, a guardedness. Gerald had secrets, and tonight, they were going to come to light. As I turned my attention to him, I saw the flicker of anxiety in his eyes, quickly masked by a veneer of composure. He knew what was coming, or at least suspected. He'd been quiet until now, watching as I dismantled the comfortable illusions of his fiancée's family. But he must have known that his turn was inevitable. I started by asking him how he knew Eva Smith. He tried to deflect, to downplay his connection to her, but I wasn't going to let him off that easily. I pressed him, watching as his carefully constructed defenses began to crumble. He admitted that he had met her, but under a different name, Daisy Renton. The shift in identity was telling, a sign of how deeply this young woman had been forced to retreat into herself, to become someone else entirely just to survive. I could see that the name meant something to Gerald, that it stirred up memories he would rather have kept buried. I pushed him further, unraveling the story bit by bit. Gerald had encountered Daisy when she was at her lowest, after being dismissed from Millwood's. She had been vulnerable, desperate, and he had stepped in as her savior. He provided her with a place to stay, money, and for a while, a sense of security that she hadn't known in a long time. He spoke about her with a mix of fondness and regret, as if he had genuinely cared for her. But as he continued, it became clear that his motives hadn't been entirely selfless. He was aware of the power imbalance between them, how much she relied on him. He had enjoyed being her protector, her benefactor, even as he knew that their relationship was built on uneven ground. I watched as the others reacted to his confession. Sheila, in particular, was devastated. But my focus remained on Gerald. He was trying to paint himself as the good guy, the one who had helped when no one else would. And perhaps, in his own way, he had. But there was more to it than that. I asked him why he ended the relationship, and his discomfort grew. He had known from the start that it couldn't last, that she wasn't someone he could ever introduce to his family or marry. Once he'd had his fill of the role he was playing in her life, he left her, giving her some money to get by. He convinced himself that he was doing the right thing, but I could see the guilt in his eyes as he recounted the story. He had known that his departure would leave her more broken than he found her, but he had done it anyway. Gerald wanted to believe that he had been kind to her, that he had made her life better, even if only for a short while. But the truth was that he had used her, knowingly or not, and when it was no longer convenient, he had abandoned her. His intentions, however noble he thought them, had led to her further downfall. I didn't need to accuse him directly. The truth of what he had done was clear enough to everyone in the room. He had exploited his position of power, even if he had wrapped it in the guise of charity. And in the end, he had left her with nothing but the memory of a brief respite from the hardships of her life. As I concluded my questioning, Gerald was left grappling with the reality of his actions. He had wanted to believe he was different from the Burlings, that he was better, more compassionate. But the truth was that he had played his part in driving a young woman to despair, just like the rest of them. Gerald's interrogation left the room heavy with tension, the air thick with unspoken accusations and shattered illusions. He had tried to be the hero in his own story, but now he was beginning to see that he had failed, not just Daisy Renton, but himself. He had been a part of her life, and now, he had to face the consequences of what that meant.